Welcome to the Dental Marketing Guy show. I'm Justin, the Dental Marketing Guy, and today I am joined by a guest who is very well known in the dental field as a CPA. Uh, today we have Jonathan Van Horn, CPA, specializing in dentists. So your practice, he knows the numbers, he knows uh, if you introduce yourself to him, he's already going to know things about the dental industry that no other CPA that you've ever worked with in the past is going to know. Jonathan, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you, Justin? I'm doing great. I'm happy to have you on. It's a huge honor. Uh, you actually have your own podcast too, uh, Dentist Metrics. Is that it? Yeah, the, the podcast is called Start Your Dental Practice. Uh, the name of my company is Dentist Metrics. Gotcha. Cool, cool. Well, and, and our listeners can check that out too. I know you've done some interviews with some pretty big names out there. So, uh, glad to have you. You know, I was hoping to just kind of go over what your company does for dentists and, and how you can help our listeners. Sure, absolutely. So, Dentist Metrics core focus is helping dental practice owners understand their numbers. Uh, we find that there, if you don't understand your numbers, you don't understand your business. So we spend a lot of time and energy trying to train our docs to understand their numbers, how that relates to business uh, so that they can make better business decisions, which ultimately leads them to making more money. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, and we also do that. We also do the tax stuff because we, I am a CPA. You know, I've got a lot of experience as as a, as a tax professional. So we do the accounting uh, functions of of for for our dental practices. So basically, you know, if you think about business as a whole as a big as a big uh, um, a big system of functions, then we also try to make sure that our clients don't have to worry about the accounting function. So we help with all that, and then we also help with, with taxes and making sure people pay the minimal amount possible excellent excellent and that's you know taxes I mean nobody likes to pay them but you actually you have kind of an interesting philosophy on paying taxes could you tell our, our listeners about that yeah absolutely uh, what I said in the, in the kind of the pre-interview is that there's an old saying that if anybody ever wants to have me pay their taxes for them I will gladly do so if you just give me all of your income uh, so if you want to make that trade, I'll make that trade all day long. So uh, I personally, you know, I don't like paying taxes as much as the next guy. However, paying taxes is a good thing because it means you made a bunch of money. Uh, yes, you can use some little tips and tricks to minimize that, but you got to look at it as a, a as a whole of, you know, is right now the time I need to be saving taxes or do I need to defer these write-offs into future years to where I, I don't have to pay as many taxes in that year. Uh, and then there's retirement planning that comes into it and things like that, that it's a, it's a whole um, strategy that we try and make sure that our, our docs understand. And at Dentist Metrics, we focus mainly on new practice owners. Uh, that's the reason Start Your Dental Practice, the podcast. Uh, we've got something like 30, 35 episodes out there now of, of, different, of different interviews with people that are doctors who have uh, bought a practice in the past. We talk about what Know, challenges they face, how they get past it, how they run their practice, what's working for them. Uh, and then we also have consultants and things like that on there as well to help them, you know, educate our listeners of, of what's going on in the, in the industry right now. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I mean, maybe you can, I mean, we just got done with taxes uh, at the time of the episode airing. So, you know, maybe this is a really good timing for the episode if you think about it because next year, uh, believe it or not, you're going to have to pay taxes then too. Uh, <laughs> so, yep. you know, maybe, maybe, do you have like one or two quick tips on like how dentists can uh, alleviate themselves from paying unnecessary taxes, or maybe um, how some some dentists tend to pay too much? Sure. So, the 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 best preparer for not paying taxes is being prepared. It's being ready. It's being uh, having a strategy and having a game plan for what we're going to do is, is our strategy this year tax minimization is our tax is our strategy this year tax deferral is it uh, retirement is it preserving our cash so that whenever we pay that an inevitable tax bill uh, we have cash available is it to you know make sure that our 
cash for, is, do we want to go ahead and pay in the minimal amounts to make sure we're penalty proof? It's really just being prepared and having a good strategy uh, with your tax professional. And your tax professional needs to have an understanding of what is going on in your business so that they can have that whole holistic approach where they have they, they know the entire picture, not just one you know segment of the picture, which is tax. That's that's excellent. You know, I, I I've always find it really interesting. Uh, a lot of dental practices will tell me that their their accountant gives them advice on what kind of money to spend on marketing or or whether or not their marketing is working. Um, do you ever touch on that topic? So we definitely teach our, our clients to under, to look at the marketing to say, you know, is this uh, campaign being fruitful? Is it is it are we spending our money? Are we 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 are we putting our dollars to work and then them bringing the dollars back with them with a bunch of their friends? Uh, is that working? Are we getting an ROI return on our investment? So we teach our our guys to look at that. Um, we I don't look at and so there's you know some you know mindset out there that advertising is something that you know it can only be equal to or less than three and a half percent of total gross revenue and if you go over that then you've broken your budget and you're gonna you know crash and burn and fail miserably i don't look at it that way i look at advertising as, as a true investment um that it's something that while it goes on to a profit and loss we actually have that in its own separate line item to say uh, look, this is advertising, it's separate. And whenever I'm discussing those numbers with clients, I always tell people if that number is high, I say, good for you. Let's just make sure that it's working. Um, if you want to spend 20% of your total revenue on advertising, as long as that's bringing, you're spending those dollars to go get you more dollars, then you can do that all day long. It's an investment. So I, while from the, you know, internal revenue code standards, advertising is a normal and necessary, ordinary business expense where you get a deduction for it uh, and it's an expense but in my mind it's more of an investment it's, it's more about using that money smartly than using that money um, just to fill in a hole on a, on a profit and loss right right excellent excellent well i tell you what i i might separate myself from a lot of people in this industry because i do seo for dentists uh you know it, it, i might separate myself because a lot of times I will say, look, we got to track the results. You got to hold me accountable. I have to get you a good ROI. The numbers have to line up. And a lot of people who do SEO or do, do online marketing for dentists, their attitude is, look, uh, this is something you have to do. You just have to do it. And I'm always asking dentists to think about like, well, let's, let's talk about ROI. Let's talk about maybe this isn't the right fit for you. Maybe direct mail or maybe nothing or maybe – uh, word of mouth, maybe internal marketing is what's right for your practice. Uh, so I, I might be a little different in that way. Uh, do you ever kind of butt heads with, maybe not directly, but with the marketing people, they say you have to do this, you have to uh, invest in marketing. Do you ever like look at the numbers and you're like, look doctor, it's been five years, you've been doing SEO, it's not bringing you an ROI, uh, maybe it's time to try something else. Do you ever give that kind of advice or how does that work? Well, most of the time, it's really looking at the strategy of the practice saying, you know, if we are doing SEO, number one, is it working? Um, you know, but I guess that's actually number two to me. Number one is, why are we doing SEO? Is it because there are certain types of patients we're trying to find that we're using the internet resource, you know, the, the Google uh, search engine result position as a, uh, as a as a strategy? Are we using, and, and are we using that for, the right reasons. Are we using it to get new patients in or are we doing it just so that people can find us if they type in our name into Google? Uh, it's really more looking at what the reason we're doing that and then looking at the results. Um, but no, I don't, I don't, I haven't, but, but it has just many marketers because I try to educate my clients enough to where they know what they need. Um, and they, you know, can, can and as, as long as, the person's getting results, then 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 we're fine. Excellent, excellent. Well, hey, uh, you know, any parting words? I know this is a shorter interview. We both have uh, <laughs> valuable time, as do our listeners. Uh, but yeah, I mean, what I'm trying to do on this show is just give more value per minute than any other dental marketing show out there. 
Uh, if you have any parting words of wisdom, I'm sure our listeners would learn would would love to hear from you on that. Sure. So you asked for a couple of tax tips. And number one is definitely being prepared. Uh, it's definitely understanding you know what your strategy is for taxes for the year and having a good relationship with your your, your cpa or your accounting firm or, or whomever to have an understanding of what we're doing and why understand your strategy uh, in business strategy is is imperative to be able to have a you know to to be used to guide you along with where you're going in your practice um, the uh, an another tip is to make sure that you're keeping your your books in order make sure that you're keeping things in line, your, you know, keep your accounting records in, in a good shape. Because if you don't keep them in a good shape and you're having to go back in time to remember what it is that you spent money on, then there's a good chance you're not gonna, you're not gonna remember or uh, there's a good chance you're not gonna be able to find the information. There's a good chance that, you know, your, your CPA is not gonna know what it is. And uh, that's when mistakes happen. Mistakes happen whenever time gets away from us and we haven't been keep, keeping up with things. Um, you'll, you wouldn't believe the amount of, tax returns I've reviewed in the past that uh, were just not re created correctly because of a miscommunication with the client. So all of our clients are from this metrics are, are monthly clients. We don't have any clients that we only do once a year. Everybody is a, you know, we're, we're a part of the team. We, we try to make sure that they understand their numbers and that they can use them and, and fully inside of their business to be able to, to do better and make more money. So that's the second tip is keeping your records in good order because there's nothing that's going to make you spend more in taxes than a mistake in your accounting, you're just making a mistake in how you've classified something. Whether that be you put money in personally into to a bank account and that got accidentally recorded as, as income, which you really don't want to have to pay taxes on money you put into the company um, because that's just, you know, out one pocket and then paying Uncle Sam for it for no reason. Um, and then really the, the the next steps are just having that conversation with your, your accountant. Now, do you have to have a dental CPA in order to do your taxes? No, absolutely not. Um, I, I personally believe that, you know, a, a great tax preparer will have you paying the same amount in taxes as any dental CPA out there. Uh, and I feel like the, the way that, the CPA is going to earn the money you're paying them because you typically pay dental CPA is a little bit more than an average CPA is that they'll understand your business, they'll understand your the, the, the cash flows of your business and they'll understand where you are and where you're coming from because they've had that experience across multiple other clients. So I would definitely say that you can use a CPA for those purposes, but don't go into it just thinking, hey, I'm gonna go to this guy because I wanna save all this money in taxes the the difference between a, a fantastic CPA uh, that's a dental dental CPA and a pretty good normal everyday CPA is is not that far of a difference from from a from a dollars out standpoint. The difference is is that you're paying the dental CPA more, so he should be giving you more value, which is understanding your business, and then also potentially giving you more of his time because he can he can communicate with you more efficiently. So he knows how to ask specific questions to your industry because most average CPAs, what you're paying for is their time. You give, they spend work on, they spend time on your work and you give them money in return for that time. So they have, they do that with a thousand other industries. So they have to go through very quickly down the list to get through people. So they ask, they, they, they learn to ask the same questions over and over and over again to multiple industries so that they don't get confused and then so that some of those little nuances might get missed if they are you know an average CPA if they're a really good CPA that's a general CPA they may be able to ask you hey I know that you just purchased this practice three years ago uh, we penalty proofed you last year uh, you had better income last year but you had a you know you bought a CAD cam this year so we know that we're gonna we can use someone 79 depreciation uh, but your cash flow is gonna be lower let's look at your, your, your game plan etc 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 so those are really the three tips number one be prepared number two make sure your accounting records are in order and number three is really understand why you're aligning with the CPA and if it is a dental CPA make sure they've got a the, the whole game plan set up for you because that's really what you're paying for. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, one of the things that kind of annoys me, I got to admit, one of the things that annoys me about CPAs is a lot of times they act like if you're not spending money on marketing, that's no big deal. But if you are, it's like a cost 
you know, they view it that way. But it sounds like you understand the dental industry well enough to know, uh, based on your experience, what that CAD CAM will mean to, to their practice and in terms of ROI and, and stuff like that. And that's a really good point. That's actually what I was thinking is, you know, the efficiency. You're paying per hour typically for a CPA. You're paying for their time in one way or another. And yeah, that, so you actually, you've really, really cut to the core of like why it's good to hire a specialist. You know, I have an episode about the difference between a dental SEO specialist and a general SEO specialist and how the way you earn backlinks and the efficiency of how SEO is done based on the relationships that you have in dental can completely change the results and the, how fast you get results in SEO. So I definitely relate to that. I think that's, that's huge is, um, you know, a lot of people would, would say, cause I, my background is in SEO for any business. And then I, I became a dental marketing guy because I recognized how important it is to specialize that it, that efficiency that you're talking about. It's huge. It's huge. So, um, yeah, so really quickly, where, where can the viewers find you? And uh, yeah, so you got your website, you got your podcast, maybe just plug those real quick. Sure. So the web, the website is dentistmetrics.com. It's one of those whenever you come up with a name, you're like, hey, that makes perfect sense because I help dentists understand their numbers. But then as I've gone through, I've realized that people uh, have different spellings for the, for the word metrics. So it's dentist, D-E-N-T-I-S-T, metrics, M-E-T-R-I-C-S dot com m e t r i c s dot com that's my normal website um the podcast is start your dental practice dot com so start your while you are dental practice dot com uh, it helps a lot of people understand uh, more about getting into the entrepreneurial world of being a dentist we have a lot of people that come on that uh that help people understand how to purchase a practice or maybe start a practice or partnership or however it is uh, and we try and make sure that people are, are well educated in that in that regard. Uh, and then you know, also I have an email, Jonathan J O N A T H A N at dentistmetrics.com, and I am obsessively glued to that. I'm learning a little bit better to turn the phone off after five, and you know where I am. But we've got clients in about 15 states. Um, I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas, so uh, and I'm I'm usually in this office. We meet with all of our clients virtually. Uh, to be able to better serve so that we're not spending time traveling, we're spending time helping people. Uh, so we don't have to worry about actually you know, going back and forth. We use Skype and things like that to be able to have face-to-face -face interviews or face-to-face -face discussions very consistently. And you don't have any out-of-pocket travel cost and you don't have to pay hourly for me, you know, traveling across the, the, the country to come in and say hi and then talk to you about exactly the same thing we would have talked about over the Skype. <laughs> there you go. Well, cool. Hey, so thanks for coming on, man. This is this is really huge value, and uh, we'll we'll link. Don't worry about the spelling, because to our viewers, we'll link to the website. As you know, that's good for SEO. We'll do that for you. And yeah, it's just if you have any questions uh, for Jonathan, for myself, feel free to reach out. If you see this on Dental Town, YouTube, social media, wherever you find it, the Dental Marketing Guy blog. Uh, just just feel free to reach out with questions and I'll make sure they get to Jonathan or if they're for me I'll answer those gladly uh, Thanks again, Jonathan yeah, and Just real quick also. I, I've got a, a and if, if your listeners are interested and uh, if not I guess you can you can edit this out um, I do have a guide called the, the 15 numbers that will make or break your dental practice uh, and it's it's a, it's a it's a guide it's about uh, I don't know 10 or 15 pages. It's got 15 of the, the most important metrics for dental practices, what you should be looking for, uh, what you should do if you aren't meeting those metrics, as well as some helpful tips of how to do better in your dental practice with those. Uh, so that's, a, that's a, a guide I have that I normally charge for, but if, you, if you'd like for your listeners to be able to list, have that, uh, I'd be happy to, to give them a copy. Excellent, well let's do that. You know, if you guys want a free copy of this valuable report, Feel free to reach out, and uh, Jonathan or myself, I'll refer you to him. We'll we'll get you set up. Just say you heard about it on the Dental Marketing Guy show. So thanks very much to our thanks. listeners and to you, Jonathan. Uh, thanks for listening to the Dental Marketing Guy show.